Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm talking about one of the most challenging side effects of childhood trauma, narcissistic abuse, or CPTSD to, I don't want to say get rid of, but to work through, and that's anxiety. To me, anxiety at times felt like my shadow. No matter how fast I ran, no matter what direction I turned, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get rid of it. And that being said, I want to share with you guys some mistakes that I made. Because if you had asked me years ago or had told me years ago, Michelle, you're doing something that is actually creating your anxiety or strengthening your anxiety, I would have been like, are you crazy? Why would I do that? Why would I intentionally do things to keep my anxiety strong or make it stronger? And the answer is I wouldn't consciously. And that's the challenge overcoming the side effects of CPTSD is that a lot of the things that we do are not conscious. They are unconscious. And until we can look at it and see it, it has so much power over us. And I'm going to talk about it through the lens of how we can accidentally prime ourselves to stay stuck in anxiety. Okay. So what is priming? Priming is when we use our thoughts and our feelings to create a certain emotional state. So negative priming would be using our thoughts and feelings to create a negative emotional state. And for the sake of this video, I'm talking about anxiety. And just to kind of give it um, a specific focus, let's talk about anxiety in the morning. Let's say you lived a long time where your mornings were a nightmare. Maybe in childhood, the second you woke up, you had a parent that was rushing you and stressed. They were stressed. They were creating anxiety in you because you didn't know what was going on, but you could sense their, their stress and it created a lot of anxiety in you. And after a period of time, those two things got combined together. And that's the way priming works, there's a, there's a stimulus and then there's something happens right after it. And these two things get locked together. Now, I thought it was interesting to find out when I was researching this topic that psychologists have been studying priming for a long time because of the um, intense impact it has on a person's emotional state, because it has so much power over your behavior. And something interesting that I read that psychologists theorize that priming happens because we store information in our long-term memories in groups or schemas. And so when one thing comes up, our brain will automatically associate it with something that is a part of that schema. So going back to anxiety in the morning, right? If every morning, the first thing, the first stimulus was the morning. The second stimulus was the anxiety because, again, you had a parent that was emotionally unpredictable, a parent that had a lot of anxiety themselves. Now, every time morning comes, guess what your body does? Now you don't even have to think about how to be in the morning because that schema has already been created. So pause for a second and ask yourself if you battle anxiety in the mornings, what is the schema that your brain has, the neural pathway that your brain has created and what it associates mornings with? Is it stress? Is it pressure? Is it overwhelm? Is it depression? What are the thoughts that come up that are part of your everyday schema? Is it I'm never going to get things done or, you know, no matter how hard I try, it's the same old, same old every day. Um, life is stressful. I'm never going to feel happy in the morning. Think about it. Put down, put it down on a piece of paper, your feeling states in the morning and your thoughts in the morning and notice the schema that your brain has associated with mornings. And now here's the hard part. Here's the hard part. At least I found it hard because when I looked back at my past and I could see why mornings were a source of anxiety for myself, right? I can absolutely see it and think, wow, that's really messed up. Like I had to deal with that 
every single morning. But the hard part was realizing that I didn't have an excuse anymore, that my mornings were now on autopilot with the schema of the past. And every morning, if I were to wake up with the same thoughts and the same emotional states, I was priming myself to stay with anxiety in the morning. So the hard part is, is being honest with oneself and looking within. And I say hard because it's not easy. It's not easy to own where you are kind of holding yourself back. It's helpful. It's beneficial in the long run, but in the beginning, it stings. But once you work through that sting of that, then you can realize that now that you see it and now that you own it and now that you're taking responsibility for it in the sense that it wasn't your fault, right? That that schema formed in the first place, but it is now active in your life. And now it's your responsibility if you want to change it. The reality is, is that if we don't do things differently, then our brain will continue to repeat the past. It will project it into our future and we will just stay stuck in it. So it does require change. It does require doing things differently, which can be challenging. But the alternative is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result, which according to Albert Einstein or whoever invented it, there's kind of a, a, I don't know, there's like some people that say he said it, some people say he didn't. But according to those that think that he said it, that is the definition of insanity. I'm going to give you four things that can help you to start priming yourself differently. And you can use goal stacking. Goal stacking is not doing as, as many things as possible. Goal stacking is starting with one thing. So if I give you four tips, you choose one and you start with that one and you just do that one for a week. And then once it becomes part of your um, routine, then you add a second thing and you do those two for a period of time until that becomes easy. And then you build on that. 